Today, we're talking all about how to blend faith and business in a secular world. This is going to be good. Let's go. This is for the change makers and rain makers that are known for their leadership in business, their community, and the world. This is for those smart, classy ladies that can hold their ground in the boardroom, but still know how to have fun and live life to its fullest. Get ready to prioritize what matters most, maximize your potential, and experience the joy of owning a business that enables you to thrive. Welcome to the Entrepreneurial First Lady Show. And now your host, Giovanna Lady J. Ellison. Well, hello there, everyone, and welcome to episode number 32 of the Entrepreneurial First Lady Show. This is yours truly, Giovanna, Lady J. Ellison, your certified leading business coach and your friend along the journey. I am so excited about today's topic because it is a big one, and it's one that comes up for a lot of us who are believers, but we also happen to be in business. So I'm going to talk about how to blend your spiritual and your work life without being being overbearing with it at the same time. Now, I'm super excited for today's show because it is brought to you by my brand new coaching course. If you are a coach or want to be and want to have a more profitable, thriving, successful coaching business, make sure that you head on over to Giovanna.com forward slash work with me and you can get all the details about the course right there. Now, don't forget to share this episode with a friend as well as subscribe to the show so that you're always made aware of fresh episodes every single time that they go live. All right, so let's just get right into the content. How do you blend your spiritual and work life without being overbearing? So here's the truth. If you're a person of faith, more than likely you have had challenges with blending your spiritual and your entrepreneurial work life or your work life. On one hand, You want to reflect your values and maintain your witness in the boardroom, in the company meetings, whatever it is, wherever you're at. But you also don't want to do it without, you know, being overly preachy or, you know, hitting people over the head with scripture or whatever it may be. So, you know, the struggle is real. (laughs) As my friend Mike Kim says, the struggle is real. So I'm going to be referring to a few pointers um, that I have come up on my own, as well as some that I've researched and also giving some credit to Mike Kim as well. So one of the things that you want to do in doing this is be kind. Okay. That's number one, just be kind. And that starts with small things, just like saying hello, (laughs) or just being, giving someone a genuine smile, right? They have to be believable compliments now, because here's the thing, just because someone is quote unquote religious, doesn't always mean that they're the nicest person in the world, right? Sometimes they can yeah, be meaner than all get out. So just be kind, be nice, go above and beyond, even in the little things that will help you demonstrate and inject life into the environment and connect with people more deeply. Okay. Number two is be amazingly generous. Okay. That's one of my core values anyway, is generosity, but be amazingly generous. That will speak volumes about your faith here. This is what it means. Extending generosity means you act in a manner that is completely contrary to the selfish me first, me first nature of your workplace. Okay. I mean, I I really, when it comes to thinking about God's nature and how he is, generosity and God go together. He is generous in his love, in his goodness, in his mercy, in his patience, in his kindness. Generosity is a game changer. Okay. So know that when you are generous with your love, with your resources, with your advice, right? I'm not talking about giving away everything for free. I have a whole nother podcast about that, but I'm talking about with the way you love people, with the way you respect other people, with the way that you offer your knowledge, your wisdom, and your advice. Be generous. 
be generous. And we'll talk about this more next week on how to consistently add value with that mode of generosity, especially when it comes to groups and things like that, without people taking you for granted or thinking everything that you do is for free at the same time. All right. Number three is to socialize, socialize. Now you got to talk, be friendly. Here's the thing. In order to have a friend, what we must show ourselves friendly. That doesn't mean you need to go to everything or be at everything, but it does mean that you want to be the first one that what initiates conversation, or you want to be the first one that extends that kindness. So be friendly and socialize, right? And then finally, number four, or I got one more for you after this. Number four is mention your faith in passing, but do it strategically, meaning that you want to, and here's an example that Mike uses. Several months ago, he attended a business conference. He struck up a conversation with one of the several keynote speakers. He mentioned he was nervous. This was his first time keynoting as a public speaker. After I gave him a few tips, he asked, have you done this before? I mentioned my public speaking experience from being a pastor, just a normal but strategic tidbit of info within the context of a friendly conversation. I found out that he had just become a Christian several months earlier. And so that they they were able to talk during that building of relationship and rapport. And so I like this quote, shine the light instead of bringing the heat. Shine the light, you know, let your life speak the way you treat other people, the way you listen to others, the way you treat others with kindness and respect and with love can say more about your faith than the way you say, well, you know, this is what this scripture says and this is what this, and, you know, don't be harsh, but let your life speak. All right. Number five, pray for business insight that gets results. Now, the love language of your business can be summed up into one word, and that one word is results, results that speaks so loud. So you and I have an advantage when it comes to getting results. You know what the advantage is? God. (laughs) Amen. In vocational ministry, sometimes you learn to sense the leading of the Lord in the context of leading, worshiping, and praying for others. Use that same leading of the Holy Spirit in your business. Pray before you get on a call. You know, right here in my office, I have a, a war room in my closet. I have my office and then I have a closet right next to it. And I just set it up as my war room. Many of you have seen the movie with Priscilla Shire called War Room. If you haven't, I highly encourage you to check it out. But this is a prayer room and I just go in there whenever I need to reset or if I'm having a big meeting or if I need an answer to something, if I need God's help in coaching a particular client, I go in there and I get wisdom And I try to hear from him before I just jump in on my own. So pray for insights before you go forward. And remember that you are by divine decree, my friend, a carrier and a vehicle of God's presence and God's anointing. You are a vehicle. So know that when you embrace this blend between two seemingly different worlds of your faith and your business, you will see some amazing results. And, you know, many people will consider you to be a godsend. And why? Because you are. You are. You are truly on assignment for such a time as this, but you have to believe that. So let's just go over and review these ways that you can be a light in your place of work without being overbearing. Number one, be kind. Just be kind. Be nice. (laughs) Be nice to other people. You say please and, and thank you. It's amazing how many people have gotten away from that. But just doing those simple things will help take you so much further. Number two, be amazingly generous, generous with your love, generous with your kindness, generous with the way that you do the small things. Those things add up. Progress, not perfection. Little by little, things add up. Socialize, be friendly. He who has a friend must what? Show himself or herself friendly. Number four, 
mention your faith strategically, right? You can do it, but do it strategically so that it can help the other person in conversation. And finally, number five, pray for insights. Get yourself a war room or a prayer room or some place that you can go to hear from God as you get your business insights. My friend, you can absolutely do this and know this. This is very important. Your message won't be for everyone. Everyone won't like it. Everyone won't resonate with it. And that's okay. Because if you try to please everyone, guess what? You please no one. So you've got to decide what your specific niche is, what your specific calling is. And when you walk in that with courage, with confidence, and with clarity, you can get exactly what you need. Your life is in God's hands. One of the things I decided to do when I first started my company was God, I am committed to keeping you first. What does that mean? What does that look like? That means that I let my clients know on specific calls, hey, do you mind if we pray before our call? Or on specific events, hey, do you mind if we pray before this? Because it is a core value. And it's important, the more you succeed, the stronger and truer you stay to your core values. Because this world is noisy. This world is big. This world is tempting and will try to get you away from your core value, but stay true to what you know and don't get away from what got you to where you are now. Remember who helped you get started and remember that and you will absolutely thrive along the way. My friend, I hope this has been encouraging, insightful and empowering to you on today. Thank you for listening. Share the episode with someone else who you you know may be struggling with sharing their faith and business. Business. And, you know, I leave you with this question, this one question. What would you do if you were brave? What would you do if you were brave in your business, in your life, in your marriage, in your home? What would you do if you were brave? Let me know. Leave a comment over at Javana.com forward slash podcast. I cannot wait to hear and read your responses. My friend, thanks so much for listening. Listen, remember where God guides, God provides, and where God directs, God truly does protect. We'll see you next week. Thanks for listening to the Entrepreneurial First Lady Show at www.javana.com.